Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is part two in a uh, little series of sit downs, a, a chatty sit down, if you will, uh, talking about um, what it's like to be a freelance illustrator and a parent. And I've just finished in part one, kind of unpacking and sharing some of my experiences with the challenges, what I have felt as a challenge myself. So if you haven't seen that, um, you can go ahead and watch that first. I'd recommend you watch it first. And I'll, I'll put a link on the screen and there will also be a link in the description. Um, and now I wanna start getting into some more of the nitty gritty of how I actually uh, approach these challenges of um, being a being a mom and also being a full-time artist. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is learning to prioritize. Now, I feel like this is such a cliche uh, and we all hear about how important it is to, to have your priorities and uh, be able to let go of things that don't need to get done or whatever. And it is, it is super important. It's important for absolutely everybody, but it's extra, extra important for freelancers and it's extra, extra, extra important for freelancers who are also trying to be parents. And I think for me, it just came as like a realization that uh, no, I can't do everything and I certainly can't do everything in the ideal, perfect, beautiful way that I want it to be done. And I'm going to have to um, either let go of some things and or let go of some of my expectations for how I will do certain things. I hope that makes sense. So I have a list here for myself. I kind of reflected on like what some things were that I had to let go of and some things that I decided to keep hold of. And these are just my experience, but I thought I would share them in case it'd be helpful for you. If you're thinking about starting a family or if you're a new parent or if you're a ex much more experienced parent than I am, but you just like hearing uh, how somebody else has approached it. So um, some things that I have had to let go of professionally are number one, um, always having fresh content for social media, even if I um, was busy working on uh, NDA client projects. So as a commercial illustrator, a lot of the time, the things that I'm working on, I'm not able to show. And uh, that's because I've signed something called a, an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. Um, and uh, that is really challenging for social media because as an artist, you're, you have this pressure to like constantly be posting and constantly be putting content out there so that people see you and know that you're active and know that you're working and all of that. Um, and before Penelope, I would, I would do both. I would, I would be working on um, my NDA client work and then I would still almost always have new content pretty much every day for social media, plus a new video every week for YouTube, um, sometimes more than one new video a week. And uh, this one, I, th I think I realized relatively quickly after Penelope was born that I wasn't gonna be able to keep this up. Um, so I'm still trying to figure out a good balance for social media, like sharing existing work or um, maybe doing smaller projects that aren't as big as my uh, typical work that I can do on a, a shorter time scale. So um, yeah, letting go of that need to have fresh content every single day for social media. Um, and then related to that, I, I had to let go of checking social media throughout the day. So before, if I was in my studio working, you know, like every hour, or hour and a half, sometimes more often if I was like dragging my feet on something, I would just be, you know, opening up Instagram seeing what people were up to. If people left comments on YouTube or Instagram, I would reply to them right away in the moment. Um, so I was just kind of constantly connected to social media. So I had to let go of that as well. And I also had to let go of writing, <laughs> spending two hours writing an email, which wasn't something that I always did, but I used to spend laborious amounts of time uh, writing emails so that they would just be perfectly worded and exactly what I wanted to say. And I've just had to get much better at being more succinct, more direct, and limiting myself on the amount of time that I can spend on things like email. So then uh, the things that I've ended up prioritizing post baby have been obviously client work. And that uh, that's kind of a no brainer. It has to be the priority because it, well, it has to be the priority if you wanna be a, a working illustrator artist. Um, you have to go where the paid work is and it feels, I don't like, I don't even like saying that out loud. Um, I think it's hard for artists to talk about money sometimes, but, um, but yeah, uh, having to prioritize the, the work that is paid, um, that's just been 
a, a very real thing since uh, since baby. Um, and I, at the same time, I've also prioritized uh, experimentation. Um, so like if I think about how much time I have in a week, um, obviously priority, priority number one is going to be client work, but I also want to make sure to be building in time in my calendar and my schedule for experimentation and trying trying things that have no specific end goal that aren't destined for social media aren't destined for my portfolio aren't destined for a client um, that are just to, to mess around and the reason I think that that's important is that for me the that experimentation it keeps me fresh it keeps me creative it keeps me open to new possibilities that might make my work better or more efficient um, so I view that as like a really is a really key element of my work so prioritizing time for that has definitely been important um, and then I related to that I guess this is less experimentation um, more like practical hands-on stuff um, is uh, prioritizing time to do things that will build my business and some of that would be like um, creating work that's for my portfolio that would illustrate like Oh, you know, I can I can do this kind of illustration that would show a client that I can do this other kind of illustration that I haven't been doing before that basically like working on things that would potentially open up a new market. So yeah, those three things, the client work, experimentation, and um, focusing on things that will help grow my business uh, as an artist and illustrator, those have been the things that I've prioritized and have had to let go of some of those other things that I mentioned. Um, and I think it's important to note too, that like, there's some things that I have had to let go of personally. And some of these, I guess, are kind of related to, uh, to work stuff, but, um, I've put them into two categories anyway, cause I like categorizing things. Um, so some things I've had to let go of personally are cooking every single meal from scratch. And if you're not into cooking, if you don't like to cook, you may not understand this, but like I, it, it's always been the thing that is my stress reliever, the thing that I love to do. Um, I, I would cook every, before I would cook every dinner from scratch. I would often cook a lunch. I did my own like pickling and canning and made jam and like would bake, bake all of our bread and made crackers. And like, I, it, it was a lot of work, but I absolutely loved doing it. And it was what I would spend a lot of my free time doing. And I've had to let go of some of that, um, both, um, both just in the types of foods that I cook. So before I might cook a meal that would take me like an hour and a half to prepare. And now if I am going to cook, it's got to be something that's like 20 or 30 minutes. Um, and maybe even, uh, being open to having more like prepared things. So like buying the bags of vegetables that are chopped already, which I hate doing because I don't like having any waste and I don't like, you know, throwing the plastic away, but, um, but yeah, I've, I've had to be more open to some of that. And uh, another thing that I've had to let go of is being as put together as I'd like to be. So I used to spend a lot of time thinking about like what outfit I was going to wear and, you know, how I would coordinate things and like putting together a look and doing my makeup and whatever. And now, like if I'm filming, obviously like today I have some mascara on. Um, but still I would spend before I would spend like 30 minutes doing my makeup, even though I wasn't like really that much of a makeup person, I would just, yeah, it was something I would kind of enjoy messing around with. And now it's like, I have five minutes, got to get it done. That's all. And I've had to let go of some of the, <laughs> some of my desire to have like a perfect exterior, I guess. And then the other thing, and this, this could be more of a work thing, but I put it in the personal category because it was like a personal expectation and hope that I had had. I had had this like dream that I would just have her in the studio with me and she would hang out and while she was little, she would sleep in her bassinet. And then when she got older, she would sit there, you know, doing her little coloring and, you know, playing with Legos or something. And, uh, and then I just wouldn't, we wouldn't need any childcare that I could be like 100% mom and 100% um, professional at the same time. And I had to let go of that idea really quickly. Um, yeah, those are some things that I had to let go of personally. And then the things that I prioritized personally were, um, um, being able to spend quality unstructured time with Eric and Penelope when we're all together. So that's a big reason why I, um, 
why I decided to not put so much effort into cooking at this stage in our lives. Um, I will definitely want to do more of that later when, um, when things are a bit more settled and when Penelope's older. But right now it's more important for me to like, you know, once Eric is home from work and we're all together in the evening, like we don't have that much time together. So I want to actually be like emotionally and physically present for that and not be um, trying to sous vide something or make a dinner with like six different elements to it. So, um, yeah, prioritizing having that quality time. Um, and then I've also prioritized spending time with friends. Um, and that's, I'm very introverted. <laughs> I don't have a lot of friends. Um, but since having Penelope, I realized how important the time how important it is to spend some time with those deep friendships, like in that meaningful way, um, just emotionally, I need that a lot more or I'm more aware of it. Um, so yeah, I prioritize spending time with family, spending time with friends. This feels so like cheesy and expected, but it's what's true. And then I've also prioritized exercise and, um, I've never been a person who really likes exercise <laughs> that much, but, um, but Eric is very into it. Like he's very athletic. And so that's helpful having that motivation of the partner who, it, who finds it meaningful and finds it, um, something that's rewarding and life giving and everything. And yeah, I don't know why for me, like since having Penelope, it seems more important because I would do it off and on before Penelope, but since having her, I've been pretty consistent with like, yeah, three times a week at the gym, walking every day. Um, I think maybe part of it's because it's a stress relief. So, um, having that time to like be really physically active when I spend so much of my day sitting down, um, not moving at all, that's been really important. So yeah, that's kind of what I have let go of and what I have prioritized. So, um, at this point I want to show you guys, I, um, sat down and made some calendars of what like a typical week for me might look like a, a light to typical week. Week and then what a, a moderate to like a more heavy week might look like. Um, so let me see what the best way to do this is. All right, so hopefully you can see this okay. Um, I wanna keep it at this angle so that the mic is still facing it. But um, anyway, the, um, the green sections are times when I wouldn't plan to work. So this is just across Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then I have 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, so the green, the green areas are times that I wouldn't plan on getting any work done. Pink times are when we have regular scheduled childcare. Purple times are when she's sleeping, so I have nap time and from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, and the basic gist, this is like a, a, a typical to light, light to typical week. The basic gist is that I would work during all of these childcare times, obviously. I would work during her nap times and I would typically get some work done in the evenings. And this is like up to about 35-ish hours between these three things, between her, between the childcare time on, we have childcare Tuesday from for five hours and then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday uh, for four hours each day. And actually Friday, Friday morning, Eric takes her at that, at that point. Um, but I, and it's not childcare and I know he's not a babysitter. He's the dad and it's his, it's his job to all of that. Yes, yes, I agree. But just for the, the purposes of my visual calendar here, I have it blocked in as childcare because it's time that I'm not directly responsible for her. So, um, during these times I would work and during these times I would be like prioritizing client work. And um, during nap time, that's like about two hours every day, I'd be prioritizing um, some of the other stuff like experimentation or business building stuff or more practical or admin stuff, or maybe even like editing a video. And then uh, same thing at night when she's asleep. So this is kind of like prime working time when I try to be the most productive. Um, and then this is, uh, this is time that's like a buffer on either end when I would try to get other stuff done. So I will take a picture of this and put it on the screen or scan it or whatever. I will make this available to you guys somehow if you want to look at it. Um, and then, you know, you can see obviously here on, on Sunday and Monday, I always plan on um, not getting any work done, having, those are the days that I take off because that's when Eric is off and it's important for us to be together. 
Um, and then Saturday, if it's a light week, I wouldn't really plan on doing any work besides during her nap time. And after she's asleep, I would just get other stuff done um, around the house and stuff and see friends and, yeah, do other things. Um, so that's the light week schedule. And switching here to a heavier week. So this would be like if I have... Um, a lot of stuff that has to get done, whether it's client work or a self-initiated stuff or whatever. If, if, if I have a lot of work that I need to get done, there are some other areas that we would build in um, work times and I would potentially have more help with childcare. So um, it's, it's the same thing. The pink is the childcare, purple is when she's asleep, green is when I wouldn't really plan on working. So if it's a really busy week, I, um, I still would not plan on working on Sunday unless it's like a really, really busy week and then I might work on Sunday. Sometimes my parents would come down and be with Penelope and then I could work in the morning or something. Um, but that, that would be like an uncommonly busy week. So, you know, I have probably several of those a year when I'm like really under a tight deadline and I have a ton to get done. I don't have any other choice, but still on a busy week, I would, I would try to not work on Sunday. On Monday, I might work during her nap time and after she's in bed, whereas on the, on the normal week, I don't do that on Monday because it's, um, yeah, it's off time to hang with Eric. Um, and we still have all the same, the Tuesday through Friday childcare. Another window we would potentially get if it's a busy week is the Saturday, the, again, the eight to 12 window. Um, and then every single day I have lunch with her from, from 12 to one, and then she goes down for her nap at one. So I would still have that, that same ch chunk of time. And then again, if it's a busier week, what we might do, um, is have that additional block on Saturday and then these additional blocks, um, maybe even every single day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, or just a couple of those days, depending on how busy the week is. And that's a block from three to five. So that way I would basically have four hours in the morning, four hours in the afternoon, and then I would have an additional two hours in the evening. Um, and if you remember <laughs> the, the more typical week had like gym time, um, built in, and that is something that ends up getting cut if it's a really busy week or I have to put it somewhere else. Like I have to put it on Saturday afternoon or something. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of what a, a busier week would look like. Um, and I will make this available to you guys as well. Um, and, and then this would total... Um, between 45 to 50 ish hours, uh, or sometimes more. Uh, if it's a, a, a very busy week for me would be probably like 60 hours. And, um, I would even do more than that before Penelope was born. But, uh, now it's just, it's pretty challenging to do that. Um, so yeah, that's what my calendar looks like from week to week. And, um, I made a little list here again for myself of the, the key things that make our arrangement work. And the first of those is having a roster with several babysitters on it. So um, this would be a lot easier if we just had her, if we just had Penelope in full-time daycare, but both for personal and financial reasons, um, full-time daycare is insanely expensive. And especially, you know, we live in the Boston area. That's one of the most expensive areas of the entire country for childcare. Um, so yeah. And then also having her in in full time would mean that we wouldn't see her at all during the day and she would, you know, not get to nap in her own bed. And, um, so for, for both of those reasons, we made the choice to try to kind of make it work and balance from week to week with, with childcare. Um, and, oh, and I should have mentioned, I, I should backtrack really quick here. Tuesdays. Um, I, I mentioned this on Twitter. So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know there, but Tuesdays, uh, it's my dad. So, uh, Wednesday and Thursday is a babysitter. Fridays, Eric, um, and then these other times on a busy week would, would be babysitters as well. Okay, so um, yes, we decided to try to make it work with multiple babysitters. So in order to make that work, you have to have a, a list of several different babysitters that um, that you are comfortable with and are happy to work with you because if it changes from week to week, you need to have you know, we have our regular babysitters, but then we also have several other people that I would text or call if, if we're looking for somebody for, um, for the afternoons on a busy week or for Saturday, something like that. 
Um, and uh, the other thing that makes this work that I, that I feel like we've needed to have, um, that I've needed to have is uh, flexibility. Um, so we have kind of our baseline schedule that I showed you, but this is the, the typical week, but there really is no typical week. So um, there often are like just one or two extra days being added. Um, things shifting around from week to week and you have to be really good at yeah you have to be really flexible and able able to deal with that basically so again it would be it would be easier if she was just if we just put her in daycare but um and if you can yes like great but um but for our situation having the having less babysitters having the flexibility along with that another thing that i think makes this work is having a good understanding of how much time it actually takes you to do a particular task so um i have a pretty good understanding of how much time i have available in a given week and um i think that would be a good exercise as well to to think through if you're thinking of starting a family or if you're a new mom and you're trying to freelance thinking strategically through how much time you have in your week. Um, I can make this worksheet, which is basically just a printout from a spreadsheet. I can make that available to you as well if you want. Um, uh, my, my mom. But yes, having a sense of like how much time you have and how much time it takes you to do a specific task. So that comes in handy like at the start of the week or when you're looking out at your schedule, knowing how you can schedule and plan your time. And then it also comes in really handy like in the moment if you are, you know, if you have a say a two hour chunk of working time and you have finished what you need to finish and you've got like 15 minutes left, having a good sense of how you can use those 15 minutes and not just like there and waste them like playing a game or whatever um th that's really important to to being like as maximally productive as you can be and I think this is sort of related to but like having the ability to prioritize work so to decide what kind of work needs to go in what slot which work needs to get the prime time which work requires like 100% of your attention and which work you could maybe do when you're a little bit distracted or not as like in depth and for me what that usually gets split into is like work that I need to do in the studio that's messy like painting uh, and work that I can do on the computer um, when I'm sitting downstairs on the couch uh, so the studio work pretty much always gets the the prime time the pink time and the um, the computer work gets the time that when I'm down on the couch while she's napping or asleep at night um, and then I think you also have to have the ability to make yourself work on a specific project whether you want to work on it or not so as i said I, I try to put the prime time stuff the the studio work in the prime time but i don't always feel like doing that some days i'm like wow i would really like to um i'd really like to do some reference research for this other project or i'd like to edit this video or i'd like to you know reply to this email no i never say that <laughs> um but the point is like you don't always feel like doing the type of work I don't always feel like doing the type of work that I need to be doing the, at that moment, but I have to be good at making myself do it regardless. Um, so basically you have to be super disciplined and organized, but also highly flexible. And it seems like those things don't go together, but um, I, I don't know, like I'm, I'm having to learn to grow those characteristics and that's what makes the particular type of kind of juggling schedule that we have uh, work. And just one more little side note on this, I think things that have made it somewhat easier are that I have looked for opportunities to outsource or get help um, with the work itself whenever possible. So like I had to do a bunch of work on my website earlier this year, um, uh, sizing images and um, putting uh, titles and tags and everything on stuff. And I hired somebody to do that. I had um, actually one of the one of the girls who babysits for us. Um, she came over and did that, uh, and that was like such a great thing. And I'm looking for other opportunities to do that sort of thing on as well. Yeah, having somebody that you can outsource work that doesn't have to be done by you, and then automation, I guess. So um, I've mentioned before that I uh, earlier this year in January of this year I transitioned to using a platform called Bonsai 
for all of my invoicing. And I still have to like put together the invoices, but it has forms, it tracks them, it sends the reminders for me, it lets people pay like directly in the invoice. Uh, it has been such a lifesaver. I'm not having to spend time each month like looking through, okay, who paid what, who wasn't, un who's unpaid, who do I have to follow up with? Um, so yeah, looking for those opportunities to, to, take advantage of things that will make um, that will make my life easier professionally. All right, so now I'm going to transition to a few questions. You guys didn't actually ask this many that many questions on the vlogs. So um, hopefully you're wanting to hear this and wanting to talk about it still. Um, I have a few questions that, that were asked and that some people had asked previously, but I had never been able to answer. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and dive into those. And the first one is how do you manage Penelope and work on days with no childcare? Uh, so to be perfectly blunt there, I, I don't, um, if, if I don't have childcare on a given day, like, you know, if it's a, if it's a light week, um, and I don't have childcare on Saturday, which would be a, a possible work day for me, I only really work during her nap time and for a couple hours at night. So I would only probably get like four hours of work done on a Saturday. Um, if, uh, if I didn't have additional childcare, um, at this stage, uh, I I've tried it a few times. I've tried it several times actually. Um, and that was why, because initially I was like, all right, well, we can have childcare, but I only want to have childcare like on, on these few times. And I was very resistant to the idea of getting additional childcare just because I, uh, yeah, well, I can talk about that in another video if you want, but I was resistant to that idea initially. Um, so I did kind of try to do work with her. And I think depending on your kid's personality and on your personality and what you're comfortable with, um, that can work. But, you know, I didn't want to, I had some pretty high standards about like not wanting to put the TV on and not wanting to, um, even though I totally understand that sometimes people need to do that. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I felt like there was no way for me to like be engaged with her and be engaged with work at the same time. It's just like it, I haven't been able to do it. So, um, occasionally I will do like little things in between. I mean, you saw in some of the vlogs, I was kind of in a, in a, uh, tight spot with the printer the other day and I had to get a few minutes of stuff done with Penelope, but it was frustrating for her cause I wasn't, you know, paying attention to her the way that I usually do. And it was frustrating for me because I could tell that she was frustrated. Anyway, it's just not a good scene. So, um, yeah, I, I would just, on the days that I don't have childcare, if I have to get stuff done, I just try my absolute best to get it done while she's napping or after she's gone to bed. Um, and if it's stuff that I really have to get done, then I, and there's more that I can, more than I can accomplish in those windows, I will get additional childcare. I'll, I'll reach out to one of my babysitters. And we have like, we have like five babysitters that we work with. As a last resort, if I don't have childcare, if I can't find a babysitter and I have stuff that I absolutely have to get done, I'm lucky that we live about an hour, a little bit, depending on traffic, like a little bit more or a little bit less of an hour away from my parents. So if stuff really has to get done, I can just pack Penelope and all of my art supplies. I've done it before. It's it's not ideal, but it, it works. I can just pack it all up in the car and go up to my parents for the day. Um, and then they'll watch her and I can work in my old bedroom. So uh, anyway, next question. How do you get work done when you don't have to get it done? How do you stay motivated? It's basically, how do you stay motivated? So um, I thought about this one for a while and um, I feel like the key here for me is that I I think of all work as work that has to get done so um, even if it's it's experimentation or you know filming a video or doing a self-initiated project for my portfolio if it's not something that's like from a client with a deadline then I guess technically it doesn't have to get done but to me it, it feels like it does I I think of all aspects of work as things that like have to get done. And I talked about some of this already, like in the prioritizing section, but like, I think experimentation has to get done because it helps me stay sharp and creative and those uh, things that build my business and build a presence on um, online, those have to get done because they, um, not only do they like increase my reach and make it so that clients or potential clients can find me, but I think 
at a personal slash professional level, as somebody who works alone, uh, it's really important for me to be connected to a community of other creators. So um, I view that as stuff that has to get done as well. So uh, I don't know if that's just a personality trait or if that's like something that I've learned how to do over time. I probably have to think about that a bit more. But I, I pretty much always have this sense of like urgency. I don't know how to describe it besides that, but like urgency that yes, I, I have to get this done. And pretty much as soon as I finish a project, this is like a, this is a blessing and a curse guys, because it does keep me motivated, but it also makes it hard for me to relax. So, um, yes, as soon as I finish any particular project, I am immediately like, Oh man, God, do something next. What's next? What's next? And even if I've had, um, I could have had like a 12 hour work day and I would be exhausted, but I would still feel that way. I, my brain would still be like, what can I do next? What needs to get done next? And I think that's because I, I love the work too. So, um, yeah, I, uh, for me, the key to, to doing work is thinking that it all, thinking of all work as urgent work that has to be done. Um, and then the, um, next question is how to stay organized. Actually, this is the last question. How do I stay organized to get all this stuff done? Um, so I have a few things. The first thing I, I thought of that's important for me is that I, um, every week I, the, at the start of the week, I clean out my studio. So a lot of the time by the end of the week, it's like a bomb has gone off in here. And, um, the, one of the first things I do on Tuesday morning is kind of go through and sort out the trash and recycling and put stuff away. And if I have supplies or pieces out, like things that are, that I'm not going to be working on right then, I, I put all that away and get the studio organized. That just like gets me in the right sort of mental space, I guess. Um, and then I always, always have a list going. So, uh, a to-do list. And I've, I've mentioned this before, but, um, I just use the notes app, um, which is the one that every Mac comes with and my iPhone has it too. And I like that because I can give Siri a verbal reminder. I, I can, well, I can ask her to give me a reminder so I can tell her to add something to a certain list. So pretty much whenever I think of something that needs to be done, I just immediately put it in the list. Um, and then again, it's something I do either at the start of the week or at the end of the week, I will look through the list and I will, um, prioritize it, like what has to get done. And then I'll choose a day that it, it's going to get done on. Um, so <laughs> that's key for me for staying organized because, um, I, I need to think about like, not just what the end result is, but like what all the steps in a project are. So like to make a video, it's, I have to like, think about what I'm going to say. I have to film the video. I have to edit the video. I have to upload the video and then do like all the little post-production stuff. Um, and it's like that for any project, like even exponentially more for a client project. So thinking about, having something that pops into my head that I have to get done, immediately putting it onto the list. That means that I'm capturing all of that and nothing is slipping through the cracks. And it also means that I'm, I always have something to do. So if I do end up with like a spare 15 minutes or even five minutes at the end of a chunk of working time, I can go to that list and, um, and pick something off of it and get it done. And as a bonus, this helps me to somewhat feel a little bit more relaxed because I know that I'm not forgetting anything. Like if something does pop into my head, I just put it in the list and I don't have to worry about it until the next time I'm working. And as a part of this, like having the list and keeping organized, I've, I've touched on this already, but having a sense of like how long it's going to take me to do one of the projects on the list. Um, before I, I would even like sometimes add, I haven't done this lately, but I used to add like, okay, I think this is going to take about two hours or this is going to take about three hours or this is going to take 20 minutes or whatever. So as a part of the prioritizing, I'm not just like saying, okay, this is the stuff that's going to get done on Tuesday. This is the stuff that's going to get done on Wednesday. I think through like, what are the chunks of time I have on Tuesday and Wednesday and what are the projects that will take two plus hours. And I try to have a balance between long projects and short projects on each day. So I don't want to give myself 
um, a short project like packaging up Etsy orders, a couple of Etsy orders, that should take no more than 30 minutes max. I don't want to leave myself an hour for a project that should only take 30 minutes because then that cuts into a potentially larger span of time that could go to a project that needs it. So um, I try to first take out the biggest chunks, so those ones that are going to take two or more hours from the prime time when I have childcare, and then I try to squeeze in the other like smaller chunks and things that uh, take 45 minutes or less. Um, I try to squeeze those in in the margins basically. So like either usually right after I've done a long uh, kind of in-depth working time. And that's something that gets oh that that's something that gets easier the longer you do this work. So you might be saying like I have no idea how long it takes me to do something and that's normal. Like I definitely went through a couple of years of feeling like that and that still I end up getting a curveball now and then and realizing like whoa this took me way longer than I expected so I do not have this down to an exact science at all but I'm much more aware than I used to be of like approximately how long something takes me or should take me so um, having that sense and being aware of that is really helpful for organization and if you're just getting started something that you could do would be to like take note of how long things uh, how long things take you and uh, try to get a sense and learn um, how much time you're spending on things and try to be aware too like if you're working on a drawing and you're like oh man this took me four hours be aware like were you actually really drawing for those whole four hours or were you like watching Netflix too or um or were you playing a game in between or looking at Instagram or whatever like try to really take note of of how long uh things take you and and have that be something that you pay attention to um and then eventually you'll be able to work it into your your planning as well and if you are in that newer stage like if you're in the just getting started stage or not really sure how long things take you I would always err on the side of like giving Giving yourself a little bit of extra time um, in terms of your planning and uh, I did that for a long time just like out of an abundance of caution like wanting to make sure I never told clients I could deliver something when I couldn't actually deliver it so I would always plan like more time for myself and as I've gotten more efficient as I've been doing this for longer I've been realizing like oh wow actually something I can do that would make me even more effective is to plan just the right amount of time so that I don't end up wasting uh, chunks of time. Um, and then the last thing on this topic uh, for organization is um, this is just like a personal preference but I like to leave myself like a buffer of 10 or 15 minutes at the end of any chunk of working time so if I'm working from 8 to 12 I want to stop at quarter to 12 and just kind of take a minute to like sit back and breathe and think through like is there anything else maybe that I need to last minute get done um, some little short task that I can use those 15 minutes for um, or maybe spend a few minutes straightening up the studio those sorts of things um, so yeah that's good for me like on an emotional level just so I don't I have a hard time like just coming to a dead stop with what I'm doing and transitioning to something else. So having that, having that transition time, that help, it's helpful practically and emotionally. All right, so I think that is it. This was a really long video. So if you have watched the whole thing, um, thank you very much for sticking with it and making it to the end. Um, I really hope the video is helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you're new. Um, and I think that is it. Um, did I already say, uh, put your questions in the description? Nope. <laughs> in the comment box. I always say that put your questions in the comments. And, um, if there are enough of them, I may do another Q and a related to this topic later on, but we'll just see what turns up. So, um, thank you again for watching. I hope everybody has a great week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.